Hi everyone, today I'm going to cover an overview and map tour of one of LA's most vibrant and diverse gems, the San Fernando Valley, which aside from being my home, offers a really rich history and a thriving entertainment industry. The San Fernando Valley is such a vibrant region and there's a wide range of attractions and opportunities and I thought it'd be really helpful to go through them and look at the map. This channel is all about living in Los Angeles, where I cover communities all over the city. So if you're interested in learning more about LA and what it has to offer, then please stick around and subscribe. My name is Ange Coney Catalano, and I'm a realtor here in LA with the Dinsky team. And today we're going to do a deep dive into the valley, which is situated in Los Angeles County. It's bordered by the Santa Monica Mountains, to the south and the San Gabriel Mountains, which are to the north. And it covers an area of approximately 260 square miles. And there are around 1.8 million residents here. Right, so before we dive in, let's take a look at a map of the San Fernando Valley and talk through it. So you have your incorporated cities like Burbank, over here, Calabasas, which we know as being famous for the Kardashians. Then you also have Glendale, Hidden Hills, Los Angeles, and Los Angeles, which is through here. And then you have San Fernando. The unincorporated areas like Universal City, which is down here. You have Chatsworth. And then let's take a look at the Los Angeles neighborhoods of the San Fernando Valley, which are Arletta, Canoga Park, there's Canoga Park, there's Chatsworth, Lakeview Terrace, which is over here, Mission Hills up here, we have North Hollywood, Northridge up here, we also have Pacoima, Panorama City, Shadow Hills, Sherman Oaks, Studio City, Sun Valley, Sun Valley over here, Tahunga, which is here, Silmar, Valley Glen and Valley Village, which are over here near Sherman Oaks, and Woodland Hills. The valley boasts a really diverse topography with rolling hills, expansive plains, and picturesque canyons. The Santa Monica Mountains provide a stunning backdrop to the valley, and there are so many hiking trails and scenic viewpoints. Let's take a look at the map, and let's go through the whole area. Here you see all of LA, <laughs> and this is a map that I've made um, to, you know, just mark out certain points that I think are us talking about. So you can see the Sepulveda Basin uh, Recreation Area right there in the middle. Moving on to the climate and the weather patterns, the San Fernando Valley ensures really pleasant weather throughout the year. In fact. It's known to be a Mediterranean climate of sorts. The summers are typically hot and dry and the temperatures often exceed 90, 32 for Europeans um, in centigrade. The winters are really mild and they occasionally have some rainfall. So in the winter, you can expect to do jeans and a t-shirt, but the temperature will drop down at night and you will need a hoodie or a jacket. In the spring and the fall, you see more moderate temperatures and these are considered to be the best times of year to visit the valley. Now, like many urban areas, the San Fernando Valley does face environmental challenges. Air pollution is a significant issue due to the high volume of traffic and industrial activity in the valley. Efforts are being made to improve the air quality through stricter emission standards and the promotion of alternative transport methods. Water conservation is also a priority as the valley relies on imported water sources. Moving on to the economic landscape, the San Fernando Valley is a thriving economic hub and there's a diverse range of industries that are contributing to that growth. The entertainment industry being one, um, including film, TV production and plays and so on which have a significant role in the valley's economy. So if we take a look at our map, you will see that 
all the studios are over here in the valley towards Burbank. We have Universal Studios there. You also very nearby have Warner Brothers. Additionally, you have the healthcare industry and technology, which are also major employers in the region. In Encino, there are a lot of medical businesses and so on. And the Valley is also home to numerous small businesses and entrepreneurial ventures. Historically, the San Fernando Valley has a really rich history that dates back thousands of years. It was originally inhabited by the Tongva people who had lived off the land and had a deep connection to nature. In the 18th century, Spanish explorers arrived in the area and established missions, bringing a European influence to the valley. Over time, the valley became a vital agricultural region and it was known for its citrus groves and ranches. Whilst urbanisation has transformed the area, remnants of its agricultural past can still be seen in the form of preserved historic sites, local farmers markets and so on. Entertainment. The San Fernando Valley is synonymous with the entertainment industry, particularly film and television production. As I mentioned, the major studios, including Universal and Warner Brothers, have their headquarters here in the valley, and countless movies and TV shows have been filmed in the area, making it a hub for aspiring actors, filmmakers, and industry professionals throughout. So a lot of the people that choose to live in the valley tend to work in the industry because it's just easy to get to work and of course avoid LA traffic. The San Fernando Valley is home to several cultural landmarks that showcase its rich history and diverse heritage. The Getty Center is located nearby in Brentwood and just showing you where it is on the map. So it's just south of the valley here in Brentwood and let's zoom in a bit you can see you know this is a big cultural landmark here let's try and look at it in 3d now the getty houses an extensive collection of art and it offers breathtaking views of the valley we also have the nethercut museum which is located in silmar so let's go on, let's move across to that, which is, you know, in the north of the valley here. Zoom in a little. I don't know how good the 3D will be because most, most of what you need to see is indoors. Um, because in here they house a stunning collection of vintage cars and musical instruments. And you actually can see here, if you look at my screen, that is what it looks like inside <laughs> right moving on to the outdoor the san fernando valley is a haven for outdoor enthusiasts and people that love living an outdoor lifestyle there are so many parks trails and recreational areas to explore griffith park is one of the largest urban parks in the u.s and it offers hiking trails picnic areas and of course the iconic griffith observatory so it's all the way across here Griffith Park, there's the observatory there. And you know, it's just a really, really large municipal park in it. So at the eastern end of the Santa Monica Mountains in the Los Feliz neighborhood. You also have the Los Angeles National Forest, which is located just north of the valley. And that's a really great area to go to if you wanna go camping, fishing, and have scenic drives. For families, the San Fernando Valley has so many attractions to keep everybody entertained. In fact, it's one of the reasons that I moved to the valley. You have the LA Zoo, which is located in Griffith Park that we just looked at. You can see that it's in this region here. And the LA Zoo has a wide variety of animals and it has also lots of educational programs and exhibits, which is amazing for children. Every Christmas, they light up the whole park and that's called LA Zoo Lights. And it's such an amazing experience to walk through with your children. Um, and that's during the holidays. Now, we also have the Discovery Cube, which is located in Silmar. Now, the Discovery Cube is a really hands-on science museum and it provides interactive learning experiences for children and, you know, it's really cool kind of experimental things where kids can think about 
science and it's interactive. My son loves it. In terms of cultural experiences, for those that are interested in arts and culture, the Valley has a really vibrant art scene and there are so many cultural institutions here. So the first one I want to look at is the Valley Performing Arts Centre, which is located at CSUN, which is California State University of Northridge. Here you're going to get a variety of performances including theatre, dance and music. We also have the Museum of the San Fernando Valley which showcases the region's history throughout exhibits and educational programmes. For shopping and dining, the San Fernando Valley is a shopper's paradise. You have a wide range of retail centres and boutiques to explore. So you have the Westfield Topanga which I've just zoomed in on here. You can see it's huge and it's located in Canoga Park, Woodland Hills area and you have a huge mix of high-end shops with popular brands and recently they actually are, they do have a lot more designer shops in there that even I realise they've got Big Nordstrom, uh, Macy's, and there's the outside, there's also lots and lots of amazing restaurants, they've got a movie theatre and you know we've got an outdoor bit where you can like go to restaurants and so on and something that I wanted to talk about that's nearby which is actually going to make this whole area and Woodland Hills even more kind of developed is the LA Rams have a new training ground and that's where they're going to put in the LA Rams training ground into this area so this whole area is actually being redeveloped which is really going to make Woodland Hills you know pretty special you're going to have everything you need there you have a big hospital there the Kaiser you have Pierce College that's all going to be nearby in Woodland Hills now in the valley in general you have Ventura Boulevard which is known as the Boulevard it is an 18 mile street which goes from one end of the valley to the other from Calabasas all the way to Studio City and it's lined with trendy boutiques, restaurants, a million sushi restaurants, entertainment and so on. This is Ventura Boulevard. It runs all the way through the valley. Now, this is where you're going to find a large amount of, you know, the restaurants and so on. The action, if you like, of the valley. So that green line, this big green line that I've drawn, that's Ventura Boulevard. So when people talk about living north or south of the boulevard, the houses south of the boulevard tend to be a bit more expensive than the houses on the north. And I don't really know why it's worked out like that. Maybe the houses on the south, you know, are in the hills, so they just have more space and bigger lots. There are, of course, amazing houses north of the boulevard as well, but south of the boulevard has its own cachet. In terms of entertainment and nightlife, as the birthplace of the entertainment industry, the San Fernando Valley does have a nightlife scene. You have comedy clubs, live music venues, and there's so many options for if you want to go out for a quick drink. In North Hollywood, which is all the way over here, you have, so this is NoHo, you have a lot of theatres, art galleries, and eclectic dining options. In terms of education, the public schools in the valley are served by three unified school districts. So you have the Northwest and East regions of Los Angeles, which are part of the LAUSD, which is the largest public school district. And then down here, you have Glendale. Um, and you also have the Burbank School District, which is also its own unified school district, which basically means, you know, they monitor themselves and they're not part of LAUSD. There are four community colleges in the valley. You have the Los Angeles Valley College, you have Mission College in Silmar, and then you have Pierce College, which we looked at earlier, which is over here in this region. And also you have Glendale College. The only state university in the San Fernando Valley is California State University in Northridge, which we know as CSUN. Now, UCLA is nearby and it's located in Westwood and it's known to be one of the top ranked universities in the country. You can see it's about 20 minutes south of Sherman Oaks, Mulholland Gateway over here. Additionally, there are dozens of private schools that offer really specialized programs and smaller class sizes. 
In terms of healthcare, the San Fernando Valley is home to some really world-class healthcare facilities. You have the Providence St. Joseph Medical Center, which is located over here in Burbank. And it's a renowned hospital that offers a wide range of services, including emergency care, surgery, and specialized treatments. Now, the Cedar sinai that most people know about and think about when they think about LA is the one in Beverly Hills, which is over here. And the valley does actually have its own Cedar sinai which is located in Tarzana, but it is a small hospital. They are, however, expanding that. And this is, again, over here in Tarzana, and they're building a new medical suite, which is expected to open in 2027. And it's gonna be here. They're building a state-of-the-art tower. This is what they're gonna be doing. It's gonna be five floors, and they're gonna have state-of-the-art emergency rooms and operating rooms and innovation. So they are gonna be really expanding you know, areas of cardiology, vascular, strokes, and so on. And that is due to open in 2027. So a lot is changing in the valley constantly. San Fernando Valley is also a hub for research and innovation with several institutions that are dedicated to advancing scientific knowledge and technological advancement. The Jet Propulsion Lab is located in La Cunada Flint Ridge and it's a NASA research center that specializes in space exploration and robotics. La Cunada is over here in the map. It's just a little north of Glendale, um, adjacent to the Verdugo Hills. Now at the CSUN, which is the university in Northridge, they also have an innovation incubator which supports startups and it fosters entrepreneurship. So let's talk about transport in the San Fernando Valley. I know traffic and transport are very important. The major freeways across the valley are the 405, which is also known as the San Diego Freeway. It runs from the 5 at Silmar back to the 5 at Irvine. This freeway acts as a bypass of downtown Los Angeles. The whole point of the freeways was to try and cut out this traffic. However, it's not always faster. In fact, 10 a.m. can look like 10 p.m. on the 405 any day of the week. You also have the 101 freeway. So the 101 is this yellow line that I've drawn here, and you can see it cuts through here, and it goes down in this direction towards Hollywood, and it's a principal route through the Coenga Pass. It's basically the primary shortcut between the Los Angeles Basin and the San Fernando Valley. You also have other routes here, here's the 118, that runs basically east to west through Ventura and Los Angeles. The Interstate 5 is another major freeway here. You can see it running down through the valley here. And it's the major north-south route that links the major California cities of San Diego, Stockton, San Clemente, Reading, and so on. Other state routes that you have are the 170 and the 210. In terms of notable streets, you have Sepulveda Boulevard, which is along here, Ventura Boulevard, Laurel Canyon Boulevard, and San Fernando Road. Now, the traffic congestion can be really challenging during peak hours. So, as I've said in all my videos, you really, if you live in LA, have to plan your travel accordingly. The public transport here in the San Fernando Valley is served by the Los Angeles Metro, which operates a bus and rail service throughout the whole region. The Orange Line is a dedicated busway, which will give you rapid transit between North Hollywood and Chatsworth. So here we are looking at the Orange Line bikeway. Um, additionally, you've got the Metrolink, which is the commuter rail system that connects the valley to other parts of Southern California, including Los Angeles and Ventura County. Now, the valley is becoming increasingly bike friendly and you are starting to see dedicated bike lanes and paths that are being implemented throughout. The Los Angeles River Bike Path, which runs along the riverbed, is a scenic route for cyclists and pedestrians. Additionally, so many neighborhoods now in the valley have sidewalks and pedestrian-friendly streets, which have made it a lot easier to explore on foot. 
The San Fernando Valley is conveniently located near several airports which give you great access for both domestic and international travellers. Now, of course, you do have LAX, which is about 30 minutes south of, I would say, Sherman Oaks. So LAX is down here, closer, you know, to the beach there. But we also have the Hollywood Burbank Airport, which is over here in Burbank. And Burbank Airport offers flights to major cities across the United States. LAX, which I mentioned, is one of the busiest airports in the world and you have domestic as well as international. Now, the Valley also has Van Nuys Airport, which is over here in Van Nuys. The Van Nuys Airport has really become a hotspot for private jet flights to take off and land. So you'll see a lot of celebrities using that airport. In fact, it handled in 2016 around 50,000 jet operations but that figure is up to almost double as of this year. In fact they now say that they have one flight taking off every five or six minutes and that's according to the Los Angeles airport website. In terms of transport like Ubers and ride sharing services you can get Uber and Lyfts everywhere might take a couple minutes longer than it might do in the city but it's a really convenient way to get around if you do need to get a taxi. The Valley is also home to numerous companies, the most well known of which are the motion pictures, music, recording studios, television production. The former movie ranches um, that were branches of the original studios now consist of CBS Studio Center, NBC Universal, there's a Disney company and Warner Brothers. A lot of people also know in the Valley for the pornography industry, which became the pioneering region for producing adult films in the 1970s. And it really grew to become a multi-billion dollar pornography industry. In fact, it used to be called Porn Valley as a nickname. Um, if you've watched the HBO series Pornocopia, I think it was called. And at one time, nearly 90% of all legally distributed porno films were made, well, that were made in the US were produced based in the San Fernando Valley. Now, that really began to decline by the mid 2000s. And I think that's mostly owing to the internet and the amount of free content, which really undercut consumers' willingness to pay for porn. Moving on to parks and recreation, the San Fernando Valley also has numerous neighborhoods city parks, recreational areas, and large open spaces. Many of these spaces are maintained as public spaces. So here you have the valley, and we're gonna go through and look at the Sepulveda Basin, which is kind of here in the middle. And you also do have the Santa Monica Mountains recreational area, which is just over here southwest of Calabasas and there are various municipal parks. So all in all, I hope this map tour was useful somewhat. The San Fernando Valley is a really vibrant and diverse region and I hope I've been able to show you that there really is something for everyone here. It has such a stunning natural beauty with the canyons and the mountains and a really rich history as well as a thriving entertainment industry. There's really no shortage of attractions and activities and things to do. So whether you're a resident or you're a visitor that, or somebody that's thinking about buying a home here, there's a really unique blend of culture, education and accessibility. Anyway, until next time, thanks for watching.